Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a whistleblower video. Ah, why am I going to do a whistleblower video? Because I probably know a little bit more than some other people because of my experiences in the past. The oh. unjust of everyday people living in the UK compared to what some people get. Uh, and I'm on about the, the illegal immigrants that come across here and the unjust actions of the uh, criminals what they get and what they don't get and the fact that society is weighted towards them also as opposed to nice people who follow the law and are genuinely nice people i'm going to give you a couple of examples when i worked for the fire service we dealt with various people that committed crime and they came onto our course at the fire station and spent the whole day with us and we gave them a good day at the fire station now what child from 10 up to 16 year old wouldn't love to spend the day with a fire brigade because it's an exciting day so we did this for a number of years and we asked the powers that be whether we could give the same sort of day to some top achievers in the school and the answer that came back from the, the bosses no funding for that. We get funding for the uh, people who committed crime and things like that. And it's good funding. A lot of money could be made through that. But he said, for the good kids, there's nothing. No funding for it. So we offered to work a day for free to give some, like, good achievers at school. We were going to go around various schools and say, not the best achievers, but the people that look as if they've tried the hardest. No. Our boss says no, no money for that. So we said we'll work for free. He said we can't do that because then you're not insured. So I said pay us a pound a day, each one of us, there was six of us instructing. He said no we can't do that. He said there's no way around it Les, we ain't going to do it. So how bad is that? There's funding to reward the kids that have been up to no good, but there's no funding for the people who keep the noses clean and are nice people of society and they're trying the hardest and you'll see that in many many different ways so the second story I'm going to tell you is about when I was an electrician also whilst I was a firefighter I used to maintain some of the houses in Middlesbrough where the asylum seekers were living in various properties and this one day I got called out to a, a burnt out fuse board in this this house and it housed six asylum seekers and what makes this story stick in my mind was it was winter November time very cold I parked my van outside of this house and just as it was in this house there was an old couple coming out of the house next door to them and there was a young young person coming out the door at the other side of this asylum seeker house the asylum seeker house windows were open in November knocked on the door and as I walked through the door I was hit with this waft of very very warm air because he had an electric heater in every single room of the house and what it done it had burnt the fuse board out and this was like on the morning it was a, a very quick call out so the house was still warm and like I said to them I said well, I can't fix this because it's burnt the fuse board out there were six electric heaters all three kilowatt all running at the same time to keep these people warm and then I just thought the old couple next door probably can't afford to put the heating on and the young lad next door to them definitely wouldn't be able to put the heating on but here's these asylum seekers they all had mobile phones some of them were still asleep in the bedroom and I'm just thinking wow you know how unjust how unjust this was how unjust this society was where people illegally come into this country sort of get housed electricity bill paid for 
and a certain amount of money I don't know how much money they got every month but um, I actually came back to England because my stepdad died for the funeral and uh, I took ill a little bit and I've been diagnosed with emphysema not too serious the doctor said it you won't suffer too badly with it just keep away from passive smoking and that <coughs> so out of interest I went down to see if um, there was any benefits that I could claim for living here if I came back to the UK well you can imagine I got laughed at by the, the guy behind the counter he says nothing he says because you haven't lived in this country for a while you'll get nothing housing benefits he said it'll take nine months before you're even eligible for housing benefits I sort of didn't expect anything on 1500 pounds a year anyway but it's just like a message for those people who maybe don't want to to live abroad and want to come back to the UK just forget about any help that you come back over here to the UK you ain't gonna get any unless of course you arrive on a plastic boat land on the beach and say you can't speak English and then you'll get hotels accommodation and things like that this is the sad part of England now we've lost we've lost the war against these people who can't even throw these illegal people out of our own country without costing a fortune to evict them from this country the normal person that wants to go and live in another country we will never ever get the same rights as what these people get if we illegally landed on Spain or France's doorstep we'd be evicted but yet if you arrive in England on a plastic boat two or three years before you actually get anything before you maybe is transported somewhere else and they're always going to struggle on that but that's my little rant about how unjust I think the UK is at the minute and uh, hopefully if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down leave your comments down below I'd be very interested to read them so thanks very much for watching from Les retired and living the dream bye for now